Shalom Rastafari, Ne Ras Yadino Stafari Name to the Brotherhood Wendem Yadin. I am Wendem Yadin. Now, we thought this article was interesting, and we mentioned it um, before in some of the other videos. What you're looking at is a, is a painting of, um, of Aksum, of Aksum, Wagshum, of Aksum in its, in its heyday. Um, and the particular king that's pictured right here is um, Negus uh, 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 Remhai, Negus Remhai, um, and he's in front of the stellas or the the howlet, the howletoch, which is called obelisk in the West. I like to call these these are the circumcised obelisk, the circumcised um, stellas. You know, there's a big difference. People say the same as Egypt, but they are not really paying attention to the detail. But this is this was the ancient capital city of. Uh, Ethiopia, or we can call uh, Hebraic Judaic, because he, uh, Ethiopia's history begins from its uh, Judaic, its Judaic roots, um, from the time of Solomon and the Queen of uh, Sheba or Saba, um, Nagisht Makeda. But even before that, we can go back to um, ancient Egypt and to to Musa or to Moses and to Moses' in-laws, his Ethiopian wife, Sipara or Zipporah, and uh, the father-in-law, um, Yotor or Jethro. So we just want to just reestablish Ethiopia's ancient biblical heritage. In fact, we know that Ethiopia is one of the first places mentioned in the Bible. Now, this does not mean that there's not um, bad Ethiopians are careless Ethiopians. I want to say that because Ethiopians are human beings and Ethiopians are people. So we have the good, we have the bad, and we have uh, the ugly among our people. And this is the story of humanity. So as, as we zoom it out, but what makes Ethiopia um, important biblically and prophetically is the Al Kidan or is the covenant? And is those Sadikan or those Kheruyan, those righteous and elect Ethiopians who have stood for the true faith, both pre-Christ, before the, the Messiah or Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, HaMoshia, before he was incarnate, speaking about Old Testament times, and in New Testament times, in fact, the New Testament uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. If you go to chapter 8, you will see that um, the first um, nation to accept Christianity is Ethiopia, based on the testimony of the Ethiopian eunuch, the Apostle Philip, and the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles. And not only that, but if you study the story of the Ethiopian eunuch even more carefully, as many don't do, but we must do, we will find that the Ethiopian eunuch was obviously of Hebraic or Judaic um, spirituality or one can say religion because he was returning from Jerusalem during the time of Pesach or Fasica or the Passover season and according to Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 he was reading the prophet the the prophet Isaiah Yeshayahu Isaias the prophet so that the next question can be is, was he reading in Hebrew? Was he reading in Ethiopic? The fact that he was coming from a high holy pilgrimage and on his way of return, he was reading the prophets is a testimony to Ethiopia's B.C. Judaism as well as its A.D. Christianity. So we just want to lay that down as a basic foundation. Now, some would say, well, what does that have to do with the particular topic of this video? And the video is that there is no mosque in Aksum. There's no mosque or masjid or mesquid in Aksum. Now, let's bring this particular 
article up, and it was this article, one like it, that we had seen um, previously on the Internet, and it's on the Ethiopian uh, Review, and you can look it up. Put Aksum, A-K-S-U-M, and um, Mosque, M-O-S-Q-U-E, in your search engine, and it, it, it should probably come up, hopefully, if it's still there by the time you look it up. Anyway, this is the page right here, and this is what caught our attention some time ago. The image um, has been removed. There was an image here. In fact, we have the image over here. Let's show you this image right here, and this is, I guess, an Adbar. This is the Adbar Azaf right here, and this is probably you know, the Mahakal, the Katamar, probably the center of a, one of the towns or perhaps the center of Aksum right here. So this picture was actually on this particular page. And it says that um, Woyane, these are some of the names that the different groups call each other in Ethiopia, they banned Muslims from building a mosque that the Ethiopian government has banned, they say, Muslims or Mohammedans from building a mosque. Now, this is a lot of propaganda. A lot of this is going on now. You know, there's a whole level of Mohammedan propaganda that's being used like, you know, human rights kind of a things, and we need to have a mosque too, so forth and so on. But here's the truth of the matter. Let's bring this particular picture up as well if we can. There's a picture of the first in fact, one of the oldest, let us get this front and center, one of the oldest, um, one of the oldest mosques or mesquites or masjids, masajad, that's the plural of mosque or, or mes, ma, uh, masjid, singular, masajad or is the plural, but one of the oldest of the mosque in the world is this mosque right here. Let us blow it up a little bit so you can see a larger a larger view of it. And this is the first this is the first mosque in Africa. This right here is the first mosque in Africa. Guess where its location is? Its location is in Ethiopia and it's called Al Najashi Mesjid near Aksum, Ethiopia. Now, if you know the story, and, and there's some videos out there. There's a video called The Messenger. It's a Mohammedan kind of video which promotes their view of, you know, the Islamic story and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And um, the video is good. The, 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 the movie is good. I think we have uh, copies available, and it's out there. It's called The Messenger. And, of course, you don't see any face of the Prophet Muhammad in the video, but you do see the scene where Muhammad sends his uh, Sahaba. The Sahaba are the companions of the Prophet because Muhammad was being persecuted, and his followers were being persecuted in Arabia, by Muhammad's own people, by his own tribe called the Quraysh. The Quraysh. So the Quraysh, his own folks were persecuting him. And he, for, for safety and protection and the growth of the, his religion or his, his newfound way of life, his religion and his followers, he sent them to Ethiopia to whom the Mohammedans call the Najashi or the Nigus. That's the Arabic way of saying Nigus or Nigush. They say Najashi. So this mosque that you're looking at is the Al Najashi Mesjid and it's near Aksum, Ethiopia. Now, once again, let's, let's just return to this particular um, painting right here. Because Ethiopia is a Christian nation. It's the Jew, Jewish nation, or Judaic, black Jewish, that is, to qualify it. But it's a Christian and one of the oldest Christian um, nations in the world. And at the time that Mohammed sent his followers for their own protection and safety and, and the preservation of his uh, newfound uh, religious calling, to Ethiopia, Ethiopia was a Christian nation and a black nation. 
So notice, Mohammed, the prophet, did not send his, his, his first um, Mohammedans or his first Muslims or Muslims, if you please. He didn't send them to Syria. He didn't send them to Yemen or Jordan or Turkey or Iraq or Iran or India or any of those places because he had heard that the, that the Ethiopians were faithful people, were true believers. In other words, they were really spiritual people, you know, being Jewish, Judaic in their origins from Old Testament time, and Christian in their faith in New Testament time. In fact, he, he talks about in his hadith, his, his, the writings that are attributed to him, he talks about Ethiopian, Ethiopian Christians blameless. This is where we get the blameless Ethiopian um, appellation and, and description to ancient Ethiopia, which we can say is the, is the good. So that's some background that you need to understand as you get into this particular um, article right here because there are ones that are seeking to cause strife among Ethiopian Christians and the Ethiopian Muslim or Islamic community. Because think about this. These events that we talk about is the Hijra, and all of this occurred around the 7th century. All right? We're now in the 21st century. So this idea, as it's featured right here, that Oyane, the present government, has banned Muslims from building a mosque, that is ridiculous because we have evidence right here. So those who say that, tell them about this evidence that we have of the first mosque in Africa is in Ethiopia, the Al-Najashi Mesh. Jeed, that's what they call that particular Ethiopian emperor, Ethiopian Christian emperor, who accepted the Mohammedan, the Muslim refugees, the companions of the prophet Mohammed in the 7th century. So let us understand this. The point of this particular article, the real point, and we're going to just scroll forward to the real point because here's some psycho babble about Muslim Ethiopians build their dream mosque in Washington, so forth and so on. And then when you go down here, this is the particular part we want to focus your attention on right here. And here it says, here it says, um, um, to commemorate the first immigration in the history of Islam, Muslims in the city of Aksum tried to build their own mosque and were denied permission by Ethiopian authorities. That's not true. It's not the present government that has denied authority or denied anything for, for the Muslims in Ethiopia because we have the evidence from the 7th century of the first mosque in Africa being in Ethiopia because Ethiopia was the only nation that received the first Muslims or the first followers of the Prophet Muhammad. That's why they called the, the um, Masjid al-Najashi because Najashi means Negus, Negusi, uh, Negushi. In the, older, in the older vernacular of the dialect. But the response of the government was correct, and the response of the government is what we want to focus your attention on right here. Because it says, um, they said, only when Christians are allowed to build a church in Mecca, it's only when the Ethiopian Orthodox Christians are allowed to build a church in Mecca would Muslims in Ethiopia be allowed to build a mosque? And what's left out here is in Aksum. Because we have to understand that Aksum is the and was the ancient holy city, as well as the location of the Tabota Sion, the Ark of the Covenant, from such time to such time. So we need to understand these facts in their proper context. So the question is not really um, when will Ethiopians allow Mohammedans or Muslims to build a mosque 
in Aksum. The real question is when will Meccan authorities or Saudi Arabia allow the Ethiopian Orthodox Church to build a church and to have a church in Mecca? Does not this seem only just and fear? Something to think about, brothers and sisters. Shalom.